And uh, this is a great uh, Bible story. And it's interesting in the dynamic of who qualifies for miracles. It reveals the chemistry involved if you're going to experience a miracle, a miracle blessing. Uh, we know that faith is always a part of the ingredients of any miracle or any miraculous dimension. Uh, but the question is faith for what? Faith aimed at what? The decision of faith. Faith to do what? Are you a candidate for a miracle? What are the credentials that I need for miracle? And in this case, it had to do with blessing. 2 Kings 7, verse 3, very familiar. Now there were four leprous men at the entrance of the gate, and they said to one another, Why are we sitting here until we die? If we say we will enter the city, the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit here, we die also. Now therefore come, let us surrender to the army of the Syrians. If they keep us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall only die. They rose at twilight to go to the camp of the Syrians. And when they had come to the outskirts of the Syrian camp, to their surprise, no one was there for the Lord had caused the army of the Syrians to hear the noise of chariots, the noise of horses, the noise of a great army. So they said to one another, Look, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of the Hittites, the kings of the Egyptians, to attack us. Therefore they arose and fled at twilight and left the camp intact, their tents, their horses, their donkeys. They fled for their lives. And when these lepers came to the outskirts of the camp, they went into one tent. They ate, they drank, <clears throat> they carried from it silver and gold and clothing, went and hid them. Then they came back and entered another tent carried some from there also, and they went and hid it. Then they said to one another, we are not doing right. This day is a day of good news, and we remain silent. If we wait until morning upon us, now if we wait until morning light, some punishment will come upon us. Now therefore come, let us go and tell the king's household. Father, we come tonight by the blood. I pray, God, give your people biblical revelation. God, give them understanding and insight. Uh, the chemistry, God, the credentials that make them candidates for miracles in Jesus' name. Amen. First of all, I want to examine with you, it takes faith to move away from dead things. Every new convert, every Christian here, somewhere you will find yourself in a situation where you're going to have to have faith to move away from dead things. In our text, verse 4, we say, we will, in, if we enter the city, the famine is in the city, we shall die there. If we sit here, we die also. Now let us. The first step in miraculous blessing, God blesses those who decide to move away from dead things. In this city, there was a great famine. Chapter 6, verse 25 of 2 Kings, there was great famine in Samaria. Indeed, they besieged the city until a donkey's head sold for 80 shekels of silver, a quarter of a cab of dove's dung.
for five shekels of silver. You read this story, they're eating their own children. What a culture of death. There are places in life, there are atmospheres in life where there is insufficiency. A famine speaks of lack. Uh, there's never enough. You're always desperate. And it causes death, extreme hardship and anguish. Uh, in this case, in, in life, it can be a drought. If you're a student of American history, the 30s, the Dust Bowl. The whole Midwest turned into a Dust Bowl. That's what populated California. That was because there was no rain. There was, or it can be poor management. You can be living in a culture of death because of your own bad decisions. In this case, it was called by, caused by the Syrian army. They had besieged the city. Nothing went in. Nothing came out. It was a common strategy of warfare in those days. Um, it's also a strategy of hell. Hell will try to isolate you, close you in, cut off any kind of supply. It will stop the flow of life. They did this many times. If there was a stream that went through a city, they would block that stream. Hell will try to block the stream of the Holy Spirit. Hell will try to suffocate the flow of praise. God inhabits the praises of his people. God will try to cut off your ability to attend church and be in fellowship. Jesus, when he was in a place of temptation, he was in the wilderness all alone in an isolated place. Isolated in that nothing was growing there. It's so simple and yet so found, profound. Faith has to decide to step away from the culture of death. These toxic atmospheres. Toxic people, toxic places. You have to somewhere have faith to say, I'm not going there. I'm not staying there. They said, if we go in the city, there's death there. We're going to die. We're not going to survive there. Do you understand there's certain places you can't go in life if you're going to survive as a child of God? I got saved. I went and witnessed to all my partying friends out of the 60s. I got saved in 71. Uh, and uh, I, I, But I, I quit clubbing. I quit running with the, the whores and stuff. I quit running in that stream. It was toxic. I quit going. I remember one of the great decisions of my life, and you've heard me, I'm standing on this corner. I still have my bike. These biker friends are, come on, man, you go with it. I said, you know, I've been with it. So I said, you know, I got saved. I'm not going. And, and they said, look, you don't have to party. Just ride with us. And I'll never forget, I said, I'm going to sell my bike. And something in the spirit realm broke. They rolled away. This was in the springtime of the year. To the west, you could whoa, whoa, you could hear it, and something in me. Why did you say that? But when I turned, Spirit of God, come a son, if you'll be faithful. Tears running down. I got saved. I didn't shed one tear, but tears. If you'll be faithful, I'll cause you to preach in the nations. What happened? I stepped away from a toxic climate. Yes. Want to know your future? Preached a sermon a few years ago. Take a photograph of your friends. Because there's influence. It may be someone's house. It may be a neighborhood. It may be a street. It may be people. Proverbs 7, 7. I perceive among the youth 
a young man devoid of any understanding. Passing along the street near the corner, he took the path to her house. And in verse 22, immediately he went after her as an ox goes to the slaughter. Verse 23, he did not know it would cost him his life. What was he messing around on that street? Toxic. If you'll be where you need to be, it's a great deterrent of being where you shouldn't be. That's why it's so powerful when you're in the house of God, you're not out there being tempted to be in the wrong house. On the wrong path. The Bible said it cost him his life. Joseph was safer in prison than in the house of Potiphar's wife. You understand that? He ran for his life. Speaking of toxic relationships, here are these four lepers men. No doubt they had family in the city. They had friends in the city. Faith demands difficult choices when it comes to walking away from toxic influence. You can't run with them and run with God. How can two walk together except they agree? You have to make decisions like this. It takes faith to say, no, I'm not going there. That's right. I know what's there. I know what I was involved in there. I don't need that any longer. It didn't help me then. It's not going to help me now. I know what goes down there. Do you have that kind of faith? And at one time, no doubt, these lepers, it was a familiar place. Perhaps it was a place that was comfortable to them. I used, you know, when I first came to church, I was so uncomfortable. Maybe there's some new converts here. I, I mean, I, I didn't understand anything about everything in church. I mean, I was in some bad places in life. And you know, you know what I mean. You, you get older. Got to watch your back every minute. You're carrying a little extra in case anything goes down. And then, but I'm in church. I'm sweating. It's a whole new world, man. <laughs> but I said, you know what? That's the kind of atmosphere. Those are the kind of people that can help me live for God takes faith to walk away from toxic thoughts many times. Mindsets that carry death. I wonder how many of God's people never see miracles because they always run the wrong way in a crisis. They mentally run into the city they run to these places in their head uh, where there's death. Uh, they run to these thoughts, these patterns of thinking. Negative. There's no faith in that city. If we go there, it's only death. Do you keep going to places in your head, in your language, that there's no faith there. It's always negative. It's always something critical. It's always the victim. It's always the blame. You run down the same old rabbit hole mentally, time, time, time again. Is that toxic culture live in your head. Why do you keep running there with your thoughts? Why do you keep going there?
There's a man like this in the story. When you begin to believe God, this individual seems to always show up. Most of the time physically, but not physically, if not in your head. Elisha speaks a word of faith. And here's this man, listen to what he says. In 2 Kings 7, 1, Elisha says, tomorrow about this time, the famine, it's all going to be over. God is going to move. There's going to be a miracle. Listen to this man. Does this man speak in your head? 2 Kings 7, 2, look, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, could this thing be? Not possible. Elisha said, you're going to see it, but you're not going to participate in it. We'll get back to that. What do you say in your head? What do you say to other people when they come and they're speaking a miracle of faith? What do you say to yourself when faith wants to be declared? What? God could open heaven's windows. This famine's never going to change. You have to be careful because your unbelief will destroy you. It caused his death. Elisha, you shall see it, but never experience it for yourself. You will see others partake of the miracle. You will see it happen to this one, happen to that one. But it never seems to find its way to your house. Is that because of what you speak? 2 Kings 7.20, it happened to him, for the people trampled him in the gate, and he died. You mean he died because of some words he spoke? He did. What do you say? It's not going to happen. It can't happen. Never going to happen. My God's not big enough. And it caused his death. It also takes faith to be honest about where you're at. I gave this book to all the pastors and evangelists about owning it. This is so powerful. 2 Kings 7, 3. Why are we sitting here until we die? If we sit here, we will die also. Faith is not afraid to make an honest assessment of where you're at. I'm messed up. One of the things that I, got, I, I realized finally, hey, I'm messed up and I couldn't fix it. That's why I prayed. It's not working. It's getting worse. Could be your soul. Could be your marriage. Your ministry, your life. It's so common to make excuses about this death trap we're living in. It's so common. Hell's deception many times floods and, and infiltrates right here. We have a tendency to deceive ourselves. We make excuses. Always can find someone, oh, it's, uh, I'm okay. I'm, I talk to people sometimes, how are you doing? Oh, I'm okay. But then their spouse or somebody talk, comes to me and they're not okay. Not that bad. It's what propels people many times to salvation. God, I'm messed up. I see people around me, and they're messed up. My family's messed up. I got older brothers. I got my older brother died an alcoholic. Half a, half a quart, I think it was, of Seagram's by the bed. 
Veterans Hospital told him, said, you keep going, you're going to die. You're a dead man. Connie and I was there when that doctor told him. Curse uncles and my dad and a curse of alcohol. Right here, too many. Instead of making an honest assessment, they fall into their history and they stay where they are. They could have said, hey, we're lepers. We're lepers. Oh, if we was like those people, we'd, we'd, we'd break out of this. We're eat up. I've seen the lepers in India. <clears throat> We're limited. We're not like you. Easy for you to talk about changing. Besides, we're rejected. <clears throat> no one would eat with them. They drank from a cup. No one would drink. They had to cry unclean when they walked through the streets. Saw this in India. This leper, and it, here's masses of humanity, and it's like there's a 10-foot circle around him. And when he walked, it's just like it cleared. Unclean. You don't understand us. We're lepers. Do you use your condition as an excuse to not experience a miracle? You have no clue how we've been treated as lepers. You don't understand what we've been through. Leprosy, for those of you, you can't feel anything. A rat could eat your finger off while you're sleeping. You wouldn't even wake up. Uh, it's boiling water on your hand. You touch something hot. He, a pain is a great uh, uh, teacher. Uh, you could uh, tear your ankle and you just keep walking. I mean, it's horrible. It's easy for you to talk about faith. But look at us. Look at where we are. I remember in, in Virginia talking to this young man. Been in the military. He got out. He's from Detroit. He said, Pastor Campbell, I'm going to go home. This was a few years ago, the holidays. He said, I got a lot of cousins in Detroit, a lot of family. And I said, uh, well, uh, how are they doing? He said, it's horrible. He said, this guy was a young man. He said, my cousin, they're, they're a mess. It's just, and he's telling me all that. I said, well, why don't you, why don't you get them out of there? He said, you be, I've, I've invited them. I've told them, look, I'll get you a plane ticket. You can stay with me. I can get you a job. But like it never, it's like he says, they cannot grasp that they don't have to live there. They cannot grasp that there's another world. Amen. If we were younger, if we didn't have this condition, just look at us. Do you allow your mess to fertilize and stimulate your unbelief? that holds you in a place where there's no future? Why sit here until we die? If we sit here, if nothing changes, we're going to die right here. That's sad, but so true. That's what many people do. It could do with addictions. It could do with mentally. It could do with life. Uh, and they'll fight you many times to stay there. I wonder if you'd have walked up to one of these leprous men and said, hey, hey, you, you don't have to be here, man. Come on. They'd have gotten mad at you. Fight you sometimes to stay in the neighborhood of death. You even suggest to them, you can come out of that mess. You see, faith, it takes faith to take responsibility. They weren't looking for someone else to get them out of the mess. They weren't saying, you are responsible because we're here dying. They said, why sit we here? 
Not why did you put us here? Not my parents sent me here. Faith says if I'm going to change my life, somewhere it's up to me. They had options. If we go in the city, we die. If we stay here, we die. But they took responsibility. That takes faith. Do you have that kind of faith? I'm not going to be this person next year. It's one of the great hopes of, of Christianity. And you don't have to be tomorrow who you are today. Doesn't matter. I mean, you can, I mean, you come dragging through these doors. And you got all kinds. It may not be physical leprosy, but everything, uh, leprosy eats you up. It, it, you see them, no fingers, no nose many times. That's why they cover themselves. Uh, and you come through it, and everything that's ever been good about you has been eaten up. That's what sin, sin will devour you. But listen, that's the, that's the glory of God. Amen. What people looked at and said, you know, lepers, man, and, shoo, grab your kids. Anybody ever do that to you? I have these partying friends and her mom and dad were faithful to church. Good people. But they used to really be upset that their daughter and son-in-law would hang around Connie and I. I had this lady, some of you been to Granny's, we still have, um, Ada Lee, Ralph and Ada Lee Sullivan. I knew all the boys. Uh, we partied together and everything. And, and uh, Ada Lee hated when her boys, she'd see their cars or see them in my house. She said, stay away from that Campbell boy. You know how he is. Stay away from him. <laughs> Maybe that's you. You ever have people? Somebody's wife say, honey, listen, listen. Don't go with him. Don't go with her. Here they are. They're lepers. Takes faith to walk away from death places. It takes faith to take an honest look at yourself and say, this is not working. Oh, I try to act like it's working. I try to throw the image. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But up here and in here, when you lay your head down, not working. But watch. Watch this critical dimension of faith. Faith must face what's holding you captive. Faith is not afraid to move toward the direction that doesn't seem to have any possibilities. They rose, the Bible says, at twilight, verse 5, to go to the camp of the Syrians. The Syrians are the ones that have created this siege that is causing a city to die in starvation. It takes faith to face that which has held you captive. That which is strangling your spirit, your life. Decisions are powerful. When we move, God moves. That's so powerful. When you decide to get into ministry, then there's an anointing. Then there's revelation. Then there's gifting. Then there's inspiration. When you decide to tithe and give, then God says, then I'll open heaven's windows. Yeah. Been speaking with Andy Coda in Chicago little handful of people when he got there, church in Chicago. And I mean, nothing but faith comes out of his mouth. In the natural, it doesn't look good. I mean, that insane mare, her name's Lightfoot. Don't even look up her picture, it'll scare you. 
make you want to go to heaven quick. <laughs> I'm serious. And um, uh, I mean, COVID there, I mean, lockdown junior and Chautauqua just returned from there. They tell you horror stories. Don't listen to them. <laughs> Amen. But but nothing but faith. Pastor, I said, he said, I've been witnessing. I prayed with two guys today down at some, I don't want circle case. I prayed with two. I'm witnessing to my neighbor. I was listening to Brandon talk about Houston when he preached it. I preached an excellent message. Uh, and he's talking about praying with the guy at Enterprise, you know, where he rented the car. He's talking about uh, uh, the lady who got him the apartment. I'm thinking, well, why didn't you do that while he was here? <laughs> Uh, why, why didn't I hear that testimony when you were here? That's how, that's how long old pastors think, amen. And I know when you go to a new city, there's a, but, but it, listen, that's critical. They said, listen, let's get up. Too many people, God's people, they're praying for God to move. He says, well, if you would move, Come on. I would move. Woo. If you would just get up. Elisha, the widow woman, her husband's died. There's debt. They're going to come take her sons. Those days, if you had debt and didn't pay it, they'd come and take your children, make them slaves, or make them work for you till the debt was paid. She goes to the man of God, and, and she says, Mom, he says, what do you have? She says, nothing. A little bit of oil. Nothing, a little bit of oil. He said, go gather vessels, not a few. She went and gathered these. She's moving. She's acting. That's faith. Nothing has happened yet. She gathers these vessels. And then she begins to pour. pour it out. And as she pours, a miracle happens. I wonder if people that day watching from the wall. The Bible says, by the way, walk by faith and not by sight. I wonder if there's up there on the wall and they're watching these four lepers. I wonder, you know, uh, I, they're staggering probably. They're weak. There's a famine. They got major physical. I wonder if they're all kind of helping, you know, dragging one another. You know, I mean, who knows? One of the things about heaven, I, I want to ask some questions, don't you? Oh, Lord, could I, could I speak to those four lepers? I said, what were you thinking that day? Look at you. And, of course, in heaven they won't look that way. I said, Lord, could you give me a little picture of what they really look like? Uh, I wonder if you're on the wall looking at them and say, what are these guys? Who, what do you think you're doing? Look at you. Sit down. What do you think you're Where are you going? You ever have those thoughts? You ever have people say that to you? You ever have those thoughts come to your mind? They didn't look impressive. They didn't look like candidates for miracles. They weren't soldiers. They didn't, they weren't physical specimens. They had no weapons. But the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 2, 4, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God to the pulling down of strongholds. I'm not running. I'm not hiding from what has trapped me. Your circumstances will try to trap you. Your history, people, your insecurities, the demon. I'm going to face that which was holding me. To their surprise, when they came to the enemy's camp, no one was there. I wonder how many times, if we just face it, it disappears. What's terrified you? What's held you in bondage? When you just face it. I've pastored for a long time and I've had issues in the church. 
and you know you need to deal with it. You're wondering about the fallout. You're wondering about people. You're wondering how it's going to be perceived. How they're going. To, and it's amazing when I made up my mind, I'm going to deal with this. The moment, I mean, I made up my mind, I said, I don't care, let it fall where, I'm going to deal with this, I'm going to confront this. They would come to me and repent. Or they'd come to me and confess. Or they'd come to me and say, Pastor, listen, we're sorry. And, and I'm thinking, wow. You'll be surprised in eternity how many things were spiritual. Will you face that which has terrified you? They got there. The enemy was gone. They faced what looked to be impossible. But when God gets involved... What's in your life this evening? If you just face it. If you just confront it. Speaking with Huggett the other morning in the, in the prayer room, and he's talking to me, and he said, Pastor, he said, man, and he was just, you know, talking about God. Good to see you men at prayer in the morning, women, good to see you at prayer. Uh, he's talking to me, and he says, yeah, I've been witnessing. And he says, he said, I've learned something. And he used this word. He says, when I'm scared the most to witness, but when I do, they're the most open. That's right. He said, I was, I was scared to witness. You know, he builds these various, he's shake hands with him sometimes. You, you techie guys get a revelation. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, uh, but he does this brickwork and various things in these uh, sometimes huge homes and he said I was, I, was, I, was, I was scared to talk to this guy you know they have so much and seemed to, he said but when I broke through I found out this guy man began to hug me and weep I needed that Amen. my wife and I just been talking about what you're telling me that's a revelation that's a revelation when you face your biggest problem, the one that seems to have slapped you around with God when you face it, many times you'll be amazed how easy the victory came. Here's the God factor. They rose up. Right here is the whole game changer. The moment they rose up, it says in verse 6, The Lord caused the army to hear a noise of chariots, the noise of horses, the noise of a great army. Therefore they arose and fled at twilight. It said the four lepers rose up at twilight. It said the enemy at that very same moment of twilight heard this marching army and in their mind they've hired the Egyptians and they fled. The moment they rose up at twilight God says I move when you move. They rose at twilight and the enemy heard God at twilight and ran. Moments you step out, God steps out. Not only did the enemy flee, they left their tents, tents full of goods and provision says horses and wealth. They went into one tent, they ate, they drank. They carried from it silver and gold and coal. They came back and entered another tent and carried it away. That's the God factor. They're just wanting a meal. Remember? They're just wanting a meal. 
They just said, if, if, if we go in the city, we're going to die. If we stay here, we're going to die. If we go there, uh, they may kill us. Even if they make us prisoners, they got to feed us. They're just looking for a meal. And what happened? That's a picture of Christianity. I came to an altar. God, just give me a little relief. I'm crazy. I mean, and God, and that's true of many in this place, if not all of you. As you live for God, He has tents loaded. Not just one, but two. More than they ever imagined. Don't believe the devil's lie. Don't believe that your present condition disqualifies you from being an instrument that can bless a city. I mean, I talked about their condition. If you would have been there, would you have chose these to be the answer to the entire city? We've got couples going out. Hell, I'm, you know, I pioneered churches and the others here are pioneered churches. And you look at your little storefront building, Back in those days, our homemade signs, little old funky looking tracks, and you made up some kind of flyer with some, your kids helped you make it. And then down the streets, this mega, mega monster, mega mother of megas. <laughs> and you feel like a leper. I'll never forget right here in Phoenix, man. I'm praying, believing God, standing at the window, just hoping anybody would come. Nobody there. And this and now this crowd begins to gather. I think, wow, honey, what, what's going on? And this big Budweiser balloon. You know, these, these they, they ride in them. And landed right there. And God says, uh, the devil said to me, see, I can draw a crowd anytime I want to. I mean, a balloon with Budweiser on it. And the whole neighborhood came out. I'm encouraging you, Nick. Amen. You're getting ready to go to Indianapolis. <laughs> Don't allow your inabilities, your limitations, your scars from the past, your wounds to disqualify you to be in the answer to a city, to a neighborhood, to a family. Don't allow hell to tell you you don't have a testimony. God blesses you so you can be a blessing. Verse 9, they said to one another, we're not doing right. This day is a day of good news and we remain silent. Let us go tell. And then the people went out. They went in and told the city that plundered the tents let us go tell. When you break through, it opens the door for other people to break through. That's why your testimony is so powerful. You broke through out of sin or the past, or you were just religious. You were a church kid, but weren't saved. Or you, you had some kind of addiction, or you, you had some kind of, there's something powerful when you break through and you tell other people, listen, 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 you don't, you don't have to stay in that old dead city. Listen, there's all kinds of, God has a Holy Ghost tent full of things. Come on. No. And the whole city ran over this man of unbelief, trampled him and said, are you a candidate? Do you have the credentials, faith to leave dead things, faith to be honest about where you're at, and faith to face what's terrified you, held you captive? When you do that, listen, God is no respecter of person. If he can use these four lepers, he can use you and I. Yes, Would you give God praise? God seems to take great delight. 
He specializes in taking the most unlikely to demonstrate His glory. Paul said, not many mighty, not many wise, not many pro They're not called. Listen, God loves to take your mess and turn it into a miracle. Because He gets the glory. You don't get it. He gets it all. I mean, these lepers, wouldn't you love to hear their testimony in heaven? You realize that wasn't you, Brother Leper, don't you? Amen. You realize that was all God. That was all, every bit. And that's, that's our testimony. It's all God. It's all God. Every bit. Beginning, end, in the middle, first chapter, middle chapter, last chapter, it's all God. I ask you to bow your head with me this evening. Lord, we love you in this place. God, we thank you. Your revelation. Your insight. Your word, God, is so powerful. Listen, tonight you can pray a prayer. You're sitting here. And just stop for a moment and be honest. It's not working. Oh, you want to act like it's working. The reason I used to drink, and many of you drink, and did drugs because you wanted when you were drinking and doing drugs, it seemed like, hey, I, I feel okay, it's working. But it's not working. But listen, one prayer, one simple act of faith, that's, it's, 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 it still astounds me. Those many, almost 50 years ago, I'm sitting in the back row, little, maybe 20, 25 people. Don't, to this day, don't know why I got up. This pastor come and said, if you'll pray, I'll pray with you. I got up. It's like I was watching myself walk down to the altar. Had no clue. Prayed a little prayer. But God, God got involved in that little prayer in Sandusky, Illinois. Changed my whole world. You're here tonight. You can pray that prayer. You can pray that prayer. God, it's me. It's me, God. I'm, I'm the one. I'm a mess. I got problems. I got issues. I'm tormented. You may even look good on the outside. But when you go home, when you're by yourself, when you stop, your mind begins to run. And the pain. Maybe you've gone through things. People can hurt you. Wound you, scar you. Listen, one prayer, one act of faith changed their world. You're here tonight. Listen, Jesus died for you. He loved you so much. He said, I'll take your place. I'll die for you so you can be changed. You can be forgiven. All to be forgiven. The joy of just being forgiven. Just being right with God. You're here tonight. I wonder how many in this place, Pastor, I'm not saved. I know I got issues. I'm not living for God. I'm honest about that. I need Jesus. I need a new life. This one's burning at both ends. I need Jesus. I need a miracle. That's you tonight. You're in this place. Uh, I wonder you'd stop for a moment and say, Pastor Campbell, I need prayer tonight. I'm not living right. I'm not doing right. I need a miracle. I need to be saved. I need to be changed. You'd lift your hand. Just lift it up right now. That's me. Front to back, side to side. That's me. I see some hands over here. God bless you. Who else? I see a hand back there. God bless you. Thank you. Who else? That's me. You lift your hand. That's me. That's me, Pastor. I'm not living right. I'm unsaved. I fear I'm going to hell. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to stay on this path I'm on. I have family that I've seen stay on this path and didn't turn out well. 
turned out horrible. I want to get off of this. Lift your hand. That's me. One prayer can change your world. One prayer can change your world. One prayer can change your world. Backslider, you want a new God. You want a new God. But you're backsliding. You lift your hand and say, that's me. I want to come home. I want to come home. Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? God's speaking to you. Love of God's in this place. That's me, Pastor. I'm going to ask you, if you lifted your hand, I want you to come out of your seat and come and find a place to pray. If you lifted your hand, I want you to come find a place to pray. Come on up, boys. Someone will pray with you. Maybe you're with someone tonight. Maybe you're with someone. I'm going to ask you to stand with me all over this building. You need a miracle. I want to open these altars. Maybe you're with someone tonight. They need to be saved. You might gently turn to them and say, listen, I'll pray with you. I'll pray with you. That's how I got saved all those years ago. Some man came up. I didn't even know him. He said, I'll pray with you. I'll pray with you. You don't have to die where you are. You don't have to live in a culture of death. You don't have to live in unbelief. Strangled. Captured. Suffocating. You don't have to live there. You don't have to live there. If you're standing, you may be seated. Let's pray, church. Let's pray. Let's pray. God will give you a miracle. God will give you a miracle. God will give you a miracle. We bend our knees. Oh, Spirit, come make us humble. We turn our eyes from evil things. Oh, Lord, we cast down our eyes.
Hallelujah, Jesus, hallelujah, Jesus. Would you give God praise on this place? Think about the miracle here. Think about the miracle that uh, it was a miracle of deliverance. It wasn't just a miracle that brought blessing. It was a miracle that delivered them from the enemy. Deliverance is powerful. It's a miracle that when, when you get deliverance, there's a stream of blessing that begins to flow. It's like here. When they got delivered from the Syrian army, there's this stream... And, and that's not just material, that's spiritual, that's relational, that's internal. Not just, they got some silver and gold and some food, but something happens in your heart when you get deliverance. There's something, I mean, they had to recognize God. When God delivers you, there's something. When I went home and poured out the alcohol, the Jack Daniels, and, and got rid of the drugs, and the, there was something, but something about God became so real when that happened. I'd prayed a prayer. They kept asking me, you feel anything? I said, I don't feel nothing. Probably discouraged them. Uh, but when I did that, that very night, so, and then the next day, these biker friends come, you heard you got religion. Well, I don't know, but I did pray. Something happened. I'm talking about just a flooded my soul. You've heard me tell the story. I left with my two biker friends. Colin probably thought I backslid before the sun came up. And, and I left with them and went and witnessed everywhere all day. Looked up. It was It was dark. It Gone all day, and it seemed like 15 minutes. That's, I wonder what these guys felt. That's what you experience, listen, when you break through. There's just a rush of the Holy Ghost and power. There are men and women in this place. You need a Holy Ghost breakthrough. Listen, God wants to give it to you right now. God wants to give it to you. I want, I want you just to step back. You need a Holy Ghost breakthrough. I want you to come. I'm going to pray and I'm going to believe God. You need deliverance. You need God to set you free. You need breakthrough. It could be from A to Z. It could be A to Z. It could be relational. It could be in your head. It could be your flesh. It could be sin. It could be bondage from the past. It could, it could be things that just hold you. Jesus didn't save you for you to be bound. 
whom the Son sets free is free indeed. He didn't save you for you to be tormented and all tied up in knots. He saved you to set you free. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. I don't know what free means to you, but free means free. Amen. Amen. Free means I, I'm not all tied up in my head and in my heart and in my mind and, and just always in a, in a frustrated mess. Some people are all frustrated about the election. And, and God bless you. But listen, listen, God holds nations. Uh, God rules in the heavens and in the earth. Amen. I'm not going to lose any sleep. I slept well. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, I mean, I don't live in that arena. I remember the moral majority. We all, the moral majority, going to change the world. All those churches closed. <laughs> Jerry Falwell's church is in a mess right now because yeah. of his boy. And, and I understand those things are critical. We encourage you. But listen, I'm talking about, I'm talking about a liberty that comes from God. Yes. I'm talking about a Holy Ghost freedom, not dependent upon my circumstances, not dependent upon what's happening here. It's dependent upon me and Him and my relationship. And, and uh, I'm telling you, it, it, it works around the world. It works in Malaysia, right, Isabel? You and Roy. You know, you know, Connie got a text or a phone call on her birthday from Roy. Her husband's deceased on staff here for years if you're a visitor. She still got his number in the phone. And I, she said, hey, look, Roy's calling me on my birthday. <laughs> we were laughing. I said, he's probably in heaven cracking up right now. <laughs> but, oh, the liberty of God, the joy. And that's what God has for you. Don't settle this old dried up. <clears throat> You know, this old twisted, uh, bitter, bound Christianity. That's not real. Right. In a moment, that quick. How, how long did it take? The Bible said the moment at twilight, they, were, they didn't even take one step and already God's at work. That's how quick it is. Wasn't this big, long just one step of faith. Just one step of faith. And God was released. Right. And their world changed. That's not just true of them. That's true of you and I. That's true of you. That's true of you. Oh, Ramashandala Lava Shataya. God, can I, can I pray for you, dear? Can I, can I pray for you? Sammy, is, is, she, is that your sister? A friend? I'd just like to pray for you. I've known him forever since he is a baby. I'm trying to recognize. Do I know you or no? No, okay. I just want to pray for you. Listen, dear. Listen, God. God is wonderful. God is wonderful. People can hurt you. And I feel like sometimes you've been hurt. But, oh, listen, he'll never hurt you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. Never leave you. Never. How old are you? Seventeen. Seventeen. Got your whole life. Got your whole life. Let God. Let God. If He orders your steps, it'll all be good. Amen. Bible says He binds up the brokenhearted, sets at liberty those that are bruised, opens prison doors to those who are bound. That's why He came. I just want to pray for you. I don't know you, but I just want to pray for you. I want you to feel God, power of God. Father, by the blood of Jesus, God, touch her up. Oh, Ramashanda, just let it go, dear. Just let it go. That's fine. That's okay. Oh, Ramashanda, la la la, rebo shikai. God, you bind up the brokenhearted. You pour out your spirit. Oh, God bless her, I pray. You keep her all the days of her life. Oh, God, hallelujah, Jesus. I want to pray for you. I want to believe God for you. I want to believe God for you. I want to, I'm, I'm believing God for powerful deliverance and Holy Ghost breakthrough. And, and faith, I don't care. God's not bound to your past. Sometimes we are. 
you've heard me preach, we have a tendency to remember the painful more than the, the good. Sometimes the pain of our past stalks us. But oh, listen, God, 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 God can take your past, cast it to the sea of forgiveness to be remembered no more. As far as the east is from the west. I want you to lift your hands. I want to pray for you. Any of the staff here, staff, if you'd come, I want to just pass through. I want to, I want to pray for people. Father, by the blood, loose in Jesus' name. Oh, the blood of Jesus set you free. The blood of Jesus set you free. The blood of Jesus set you free. The blood, the blood. Oh, the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus. The loose. The blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus. Oh, Ramashamdala Lava Rebo Shaya. Oh, Gadishebo Ramashaya. Oh, the blood, the blood, the blood. Oh, Ramashibo. Oh, the blood. Loose in Jesus' name. Loose in Jesus' name. Be set free in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Oh, the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus. Oh, Oh, Would you give God praise? Would you give God praise? Would you give God praise? Oh, Ramashanda. I went to the enemy's camp. Oh, Ramashanda la la va rebo shah. Oh, Ramashanda la la va shatai. Hallelujah. I want you to say these words. I want you to say in the name of Jesus. I'm free. In the name of Jesus. I am free. I will not be tormented. I will not be bound in fear. But I will live my life in faith. In the Son of God. Who saved me. And died for me. In Jesus' name, I'm free. Would you give God one more praise? Oh, Hallelujah. I want to sing a chorus. I went to the enemy's camp. I wonder if that came from this. I wonder if the lepers were singing that. I went to the enemy's camp, took back what he stole from me, took back what he stole from me. Sometimes you have to do that. Right? Let's sing it. Well, I went to the enemy's camp, and I took back what he stole from me. I took back what he stole from me. I took back what he stole from me. Well, I went to the enemy's camp, and I, I took back what he stole from me. He's under my feet. 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 Stay your hand is under my
believe it's true. Come and give me a testimony. Amen. Send me a text. I may not read it, but send it anyway. <laughs> but anyway, uh, tell somebody what Jesus has done for you. I'm going to ask Martin.